Hey there everyone and welcome to the Android training. Now in this video we are going to first take a look what we're going to be creating in this in this upcoming couple of videos and the most important part is understanding what we are going to create. So let's first have a look what we are going to about to build and uh, on this screen there is an Android emulator and this is what we are going to create and one thing that I want to point out here that this is a constraint layout that means uh, no matter what the size of your mobile phone, it's going to stay intact and it's going to look exactly same no matter what the device size is. It can be the smaller one or the bigger one, 5.5 inch screen or maybe bigger than that. Doesn't really matter in this case because these are constraint based layouts. Okay, so this is a simple uh, tic-tac-toe game. I forgot to edit the application. We're going to do it when we're going to create this app and uh, we'll be writing all codes uh, just by learning and do it on the go. Okay, so this is simple my application and we have some animation included as well. And uh, this is basically the simple game. You might have played that a million times and by the way, there's a button at the bottom that says play again as well. So this is what we're gonna create, simple tic-tac-toe game. Let me just quit that and bring up my, bring up my iPad there so that I can uh, walk you through with a couple of steps. Now, what happens when you play some game it's really common that you get involved in winning the game or just playing the game thoroughly. What you don't understand most of the time is the game mechanics, that how the game is going to be designed. So I'm not saying you haven't played tic-tac-toe there. You might have played that a million times, but this time when we're going to play it, we are going to understand that how this game is being designed. This will help you to improve the logics, that how to understand a problem in a step-by-step -step manner. And obviously, once you understand the problem, it's much more easier to design a solution for that problem. Okay, so you're going to play tic-tac-toe along with me. So let's just get started here. And you might have seen the tic-tac-toe pattern. It's really simple. Uh, let's just play, let's just draw our lines with these guys. And uh, there we go. So our board is ready to play tic-tac-toe game. And uh, you might have played that a lot of time that first of all, uh, there is a um, any place there is a cross involved there and there is a zero involved as well. Okay. And uh, there are a couple of problems which I want to point out there and you might haven't noticed that uh, apart from winning it. So let's try to tackle them. Uh, what are these problems and how actually the game is being designed. So let me clear the page and design a smaller game for us uh, at the corner here. And obviously we do understand that we do have zeros and crosses and uh, just like that crosses and uh, maybe zero again and uh, crosses again. Okay, so let's understand what are the problems here. Now, the number one problem is, I know that's that's a very, very bizarre one, but the number one problem that we are gonna have is uh, kind of, I, I would call that as simply uh, alternative. Now, don't judge me based on my handwriting, uh, it's sometimes bare, bare there. But the first problem is alternative position of the player. Like for example, once the cross has played, the next uh, thing should always be zero. So that's the problem number one, which we'll be dealing up. We don't want that uh, once the cross has been played, the next time the game is being tabbed, it, it is again cross. So that's problem number one. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to assign some kind of values to the player so we can track who is playing right now. So we have to use some kind of Boolean variables like active player or something so that I can understand that, hey, whatever the Boolean variable is assigned to that uh, to that player, he's only going to play. And at, at each tap, we have to uh, change that Boolean variable from player one to player one or, or to player one to player two, okay? So this is the first problem, uh, which is alternative playing of the game. Uh, second problem which you might have not been uh, seen that way is the position tracking, okay? Uh, this is going to be position uh, tracking. Okay, there we go. Okay, I missed an end there. Okay, tracking. Okay, you got that. <laughs> okay, so position tracking. Now, what is that? Now, what I want you to understand that when you tap on the on the position there, now there should be one more solution here that uh, once the zero has been played or cross has been played, whatever that is being played, we have to also track that when the next time somebody taps on that position, uh, the position or the values there or the player there shouldn't be changed. What I mean by that is, let's just say the zero has played on this position here. Uh, somebody who is having a turn of the cross, when he taps on that, he shouldn't be allowed 
to replace this zero there because otherwise he'll be just tapping and tapping again. So somehow we have to position the track that once uh, this position is being filled up, nobody should be allowed to uh, play on that position again. So game should have some kind of uh, static mechanism that this this cannot be changed whatever in the in the course of the time of this game. Once he hit the play again, uh, then we can reset that all, okay? So these are the few important parts as well, uh, which we'll be focusing. And also the third thing that we'll be focusing here uh, is gonna be the button of uh, play again. Okay, notice this time I'm writing it much, much better because my pencil is working this time good, okay? So now what happens when somebody says play again? Now we have to do uh, uh, these two things, the point number one and point number two, we have to flush that out. That means uh, all the cross and zero should be flushed out. Uh, all the images there or whatever the mechanics you're using should be reset back to initial stage. Also, uh, you have to reset the position tracking again to the initial state so that now player can uh, play the game, okay? So these are the most basic things which we'll be focusing. Uh, by the way, just to make sure that you understand the things, there can be also a willing, winning logic on which we can work on with. Uh, so what, how that will work on, although we'll be not working on the winning, winning logic at this stage of, of the time, maybe we can do that later on, it's not a big deal. But what you need to understand, that there are calculatable uh, winning positions in this game, okay? So what I mean by that, uh, if somebody plays uh, like this, or this, or this, if he, or if the player one uh, gets uh, these three things, he'll be declared as winner. Uh, there can be three more like this, this, and this, and obviously we do have a diagonal. I know this is a mess, but these are the only, what I call six, seven, eight, eight positions on which any player can win. So at each position, when the player has played its posi uh, its turn, uh, we have to calculate this logic that uh, if our position tracking, uh, which we are gonna um, deal up with that, right now it's a little bit confusing, don't worry, it will not be uh, when we'll be making the app. So at each of the turn of the player, what we have to do is simply we have to track the position that our player one or the player two who is being playing uh, has actually got in the position tracking uh, the value which we have mentioned, the six, uh, uh, the eight positions there, okay? Uh, so I know uh, right now this is looking a little bit tricky, but don't worry, this is far more easiest game that you'll be designing up in this course. Uh, there's nothing much here. When we'll be writing the code, it will become much more simpler. So let's just start. Uh, don't bo bother about the winning logic. Uh, the goal is really simple. First, we have to work on all the alt alternative logic so that uh, one player can play at the time and the next turn is allotted to the next guy and whenever he taps, uh, if the player one is cross, the next turn should be zero and the next turn should be cross. So that's our goal number one. And the goal number two is position tracking so that if somebody has tapped on a position, if he taps there again, he's not allowed to do anything, okay? Also, uh, his, tra his uh, kind of a turn is not being missed since he was not able to do anything his turn shouldn't be lapsed, okay? So these are the only goals we'll be tracking right now. Also, we'll be working on the play again as well because it's far more simpler. Uh, but don't worry, uh, this is gonna be pretty simple and pretty easy app that we're gonna build up. And I think that's all the theoretical knowledge that you uh, really wanted to have in here. Now let's fire up our Android Studio and build this app.